really <coughs> my profession is uh, surgery, but uh, I was talking with my friend, and uh, uh, really, I don't know why I accept to do the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> because really, it's very difficult, and after to read the many, many, many uh, articles, you know, yeah. uh, we know that we don't know anything about the this uh, system is very, very complicated, especially because the, the structures are not so defined, you know? Most of the times, uh, the positive results that we have uh, uh, are coming from uh, experiments in animals, you know? And as you know, sometimes it's difficult to get information from human beings. And we have part of the information uh, with the evaluations that Penfield uh, did it during the, the activity that he has uh, uh, as a neurosurgeon in, uh, in the north of the American continent. Uh, most of the patients you know, with the epileptic uh, problem, they have to, to be operated uh, without the uh, general anesthesia. Uh, sometimes they were using local anesthesia and they were trying to, to do a stimulation in the cortex and to check uh, what kind of reactions they uh, were uh, getting after the stimulation. And can you imagine, you know, during the operation of, for epilepsy, for example, in epilepsy, we have to, to be sure that the area that is producing the high uh, action potentials you know, are integrated in the area that we want to to, uh, to operate. And, and for that reason, the, the, the information that we have is really, really partial, you know, especially. In synthesis, the expression of Dr. Pimfield was that the cortex is uh, silent, you know, he didn't get a, a lot of uh, response after the stimulation of the cortex uh, uh, with these uh, patients, no? more than 500 patients. And uh, uh, around the pre, the premotoric area, preorolandic area, was possible to get some information special to the base of the frontal area, the rostral, rostral part of the frontal lobe especially, um, really a, a few cases, you know, uh, when they uh, were trying to do the hypothalamic uh, stimulation, etc. you know, but during uh, this uh, period of time, for example, the stereotaxic surgery was not so, was not so actual, you know, they, they were at the beginning, and for that reason, in synthesis, we have the concept that the cortex uh, was not reacting concerned the autonomic nervous system. That's the that's the expression that we have at the moment. Okay. Uh, really, the central part of the, the autonomic uh, nervous system really is the hypothalamus. You know, the subcortical areas, especially the part of the thalamus, but really the hypothalamus. The anterior part of the uh, hypothalamus really is a uh, uh, parasympathetic, you know, center, really. And the posterior part of the hypothalamic area is a uh, uh, sympathetic area. Um, we have the concrete demonstration that the hypothalamic area really is controlling uh, part of the sensation uh, concerning the autonomic nervous system. I don't know if you have uh, this information clear, you know? Okay. Uh, the other problem that we have is uh, that the uh, images that we have concerning the autonomic nervous system, they are very, uh, very simple. And we cannot imagine that the terminals of this system is so diffuse in the tissue. Uh, as you know, the peripheral part of the, of the nervous system is the autonomic nervous system. And the 
really the concentration of the activity resistance is, is directed has the direction of the smooth uh, muscle and glands, especially. Um, by definition, the system it looks as an uh, efferent system. But the, with the literature that we have, we know that we have a, a very important afferent component. You know, if the component is uh, sectorized, you know, in the medulla, but really we have a real reflex arc no concerted reactions that we have from the uh, this uh, automatic system is uh, is really important. Okay, but I'm going to I'm going to try to show you the the, the classical <coughs> information that we have. But really, the the first image is a uh, hypothalamus, as you know, and uh, we have to remember that the anterior part is really a parasympathetic uh, center. And the posterior part is really a sympathetic area. The information that we have from these areas are coming most of, most of the uh, experimentation in animals, uh, mammals, uh, animals. You know. And really, we have the human being a representation in this because we are sure that the posterior part of the hypothalamus is uh, sympathetic. And then you have all the uh, the. Um, description that we have concerned the, the rostral frontal lobe area and the hypothalamus and the rest of the upper part of the brain stem. Okay, this is the configuration of the homunculus. We have a, the first slide is uh, giving you the 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 uh, the field box, you know, of the sensor system, and the second one is for the motoric system. The, you can imagine all the experiments that they did, you know, to, to get these results. The, it's amazing, and sometimes it's a little bit uh, difficult to understand how it was possible for them to do that in young kids, you know, it's a little bit crazy. Who next? Okay, this is the specification of the areas. As I told you, this area is really important, the, the inferior part of the preroidal decay area, in special the, the temporal area, the base of the frontal lobe area, really, and, and the hypothalamic area, you know, is the most important. This is the Broca area, the Volpore area, and the, uh, the Wernicke area is around this, okay. Okay, now this is the figure that we have concerned the terminal part of the autonomic system. You can, you can imagine that the, in front of the classic figures that we have, you know, the, we have a complete neck uh, around the structure, you know. I, I, in my opinion, is is covering all the tissue, really, with these uh, terminals. Uh, they were using special uh, colorants, you know, to, to, to do the demonstration in this uh, tissue. Uh, you can see this uh, net of, of coverage of the, of the system. But it's just for, for you to give an idea about the real thing with the, these microscopic uh, uh, features. Okay. okay, that's the description. is a little bit more real, you know, the localization of the Ganglia, uh, sympathetic ganglia in the, in the neck. You know, you can see the middle cervical ganglia, the second thoracic ganglia, etc. And the description of these are the figures that we have permits the manipulation of these structures in case uh, uh, of the treatment. You know, it's concrete that we we have the possibility to do treatment in base of the of the information that we have because we can use uh, stimulation and we can block the, the sympathetic information, for example, against the pain, you know, using the maps that we have uh, available at the moment. Uh, Dr. Posner is, is, uh, is one of the persons that know very well at this, this point. Okay, next.
Ok, um, really the, the synthesis of this uh, slide is just to remember that the central nervous system alone, for example, it doesn't have the possibility to, to get the information, you know, of the distal structures, but at the same time needs uh, help from this uh, automatic uh, system, you know, uh, really to keep the homeostasis, that is, is the main purpose of, the, of this automatic system. Is uh, how it's possible to control the temperature, how it's possible to control the, the, the position, how it's possible to do a lot of things, you know, and, and to do it uh, automatically, autonomic, uh, in an autonomic way. Uh, the most important is that the, the, after the brain, we have the heart system or brain stem, and the, in the upper part, we have a good representation of the parasympathetic system. Uh, uh, okay, uh, if we are going you know, down, we have the medulla, and in the, in the, in the middle part of the medulla, we have the, the sympathetic system control, and at the end of the spinal cord, really, and, and the spine, really, we have the representation again of the parasympathetic, concerned the sacral area or the genital area. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, if you can imagine, for example, if you have a system uh, with the possibility to work all the time and without the uh, interruption, uh, it will be not possible to be sure that the, that the guarantee of the functioning of this system will be apparent after a very short time. And for that reason, we have this explanation today that the best way is to use something that can be replaced and something that can be uh, removed, you know, uh, uh, for convenience and then uh, I think uh, the, uh, the perfect, uh, the perfect uh, construction of this, you know, uh, give the result to to to, uh, to think in two parts. You know, one of the parts is aesthetically excitatory, and one of the parts is producing moderation of the excitation. I think it's uh, fantastic. And the, the other point is to use the possibility to. Uh, to think in neurotransmitters. Because if you have a, if you are tired, if you are tired and if you have fatigue, uh, it's very simple. You are going to rest and then you are going to restitute part of the neurotransmitter and then to continue. Is uh, 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 for example, if you have the, the, the gasoline of the of the sympathetic or the sympathetic or parasympathetic uh, system is uh, is low or you have a little bit more uh, uh, you you can imagine the use of that i think is uh, is excellent response of the nature you know to think in, in this kind of division is one excitatory part and one part with the possibility to do moderation of this activity at the same time see it next Okay, it's one of the classical uh, pictures that we have. Uh, and you can see the, the antagonism of these systems, but uh, really, in the, for practical reasons, uh, we cannot imagine that I, they are antagonists 100%, absolutely. Because sometimes you have the possibility to see the sympathetic system work together at the same time with the parasympathetic system. I don't know see if you have uh, one example of this, for example, if, one, uh, if you have a, a one example uh, where the situation is the, the, the sympathetic system working at the same time, not really uh, antagonism with the other system at the same time. For example, if you have uh, something uh, as an example for this situation. I, I you don't remember? Ah. It, it must be all the time because it's a balance, as you say. It's yes, it's balance, but, but for example, if you are fighting, uh, it's not possible but, uh, to do a uh, urination or to put your uh, bladder uh, empty during the fight, you know. If you are fighting really, 
it means that the that the blood is continent. Yeah? For example, if you are fighting, your digestion is cancelled, it's almost cancelled, you know? But we have several events where the situation is together. For example, in the intercourse, if, if we have erection, if we have at the same time the heart is beating more, etc., etc., but they are working at the same time. And then the ejaculation is coming at the same time. You know, it's really amazing that the situation, they are not the antagonists, uh, 100%, in my opinion. Okay, we just uh, yeah. uh, Okay, I have, uh, uh, may I have a question? Oh. Like, so one way, I like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the way I think about it is like, I, I think about two guys that are equally strong that are arm wrestling, perhaps. And they're very strong, they're arm wrestling, sympathetic system is one of these guys, parasympathetic is the other of these guys. If that fight goes a little bit more way, maybe one goes to 55% force, the other one goes to 45% force. So they're antagonistic in that way, like your pupil will constrict and dilate. And you're regulating the amount of light, if a little more light comes in, it'll constrict a little more. But it's always fighting. Like if you even see and examine somebody's eyes, you're always gonna see it like, like flickering, if you will. The two systems are fighting, like these two guys arm wrestling are fighting against each other. Yeah, uh, yeah the intensity is important, but you have the, the common denominator of this situation is, is, the, is, is the neurotransmitter and the fatigue at the same time. But, but really we have events where the opposite uh, situation is almost cancelled. And for that reason we have this uh, variation in intensities. But, the, but the really classically uh, we cannot call 100% for example autonomic because it's not uh, autonomic. They're not, they're not on off switches, I understand huh? that. They're not on off switches perhaps, yes, they're no, like more like dimmers, no. like no. dimmers perhaps, more than an on off switch, that's how I think about it. This is a, a live system and in my opinion it's not 100%. For example, uh, the olfactory, the, the ring encephalus. For example, I think it has to be included in these uh, parameters because you you are not deciding to smell something. Sometimes you are getting the, the stimulation, you no, know, with your nose that something is happening, and then it's really autonomic, and you are reacting. And you are reacting sometimes very fast, and you are relaxing. It, it really is not in your experience. It's not dangerous for you. This is really amazing. For that reason, the message that, with the limitation of the information that I have, no accessory, I can give you the concept of this part of the peripheral system. You know, is just to control the the uh, distal parts. You know more or less automatically. For example, you don't have to put your eyes all the time in your heart, you know, to, to, to check the, the activity of the heart. It's not necessary for that reason, but it's not completely automatical because at, at the level of the medulla, at the level of the mesencephalum, at the level of the protuberance, or at the level of the, of the simple medulla, you have the the possibility you have a small brains to control these uh, structures without the information in the big uh, uh, supratentorial and intelligent area. Because the concept that I that I want to uh, to give at the same time is that the if you compare the functions with the animal functions, for example, it's amazing that the part of the problem that we have in the this autonomy is because sometimes we are doing abuse of the automatic system. Do you want to know why? For example, suppose that I'm in front of you and, and then I have emergency with the jury and then I have to decide or no, I'm going to complete the information that I have and then I'm going to the bar. I'm doing a terrible abuse because the dog is doing that, yeah, you know, it's perfect. The instinct for this animal is perfect. But now I am killing my animal because it's not possible for me to sleep because I am busy. It's not possible to eat because I don't have time. But 12 o'clock, oh, I have to eat. It's terrible. How is possible that the society, you know, the, this, uh, this uh, terrible uh, uh, system that we have, the slavery, you know, in, impose that the 12 o'clock is the time to eat. If you are hungry, I don't care. 
If you are tired, I don't care. I don't know if you have the dogs, you know, you remove the chain, you know, it's 80 kilometers per hour, you know, the autonomic system of this uh, perfect animal, you know, is, is showing you that sometimes we have the chains without the possibility to escape, without the possibility to, to express all the energy. And in my opinion, is it the beginning of the, of the disautonomy that we have sometimes. And the, okay, for the doctor is very simple. Oh, you have stress, yes. I don't need to see you anymore because you have stress. Please go to the psychiatrist, the psychologist, and then you are not sick. You have stress. Hey, doctor, the stress, why? You know, for the reason, the message. I think the stress, in my opinion, is coming because we have a very, very, very routinary life. <coughs> And we are trying to expand the same kind of neurotransmitter in certain kind of axioms. And then we have the chronic, the classic chronic fatigue pain. I don't know if you are agree with me. And sometimes when I'm telling the patient, hey, listen, the problem is that you are a little bit perfectionist, that you are a little bit uh, routinary. For example, I was asking one of the the street inhabitants, you know, the name for the energy is Scholler, you know. And I was asking, hey, listen, in Spanish, because the only expression that I have is Spanish. Oye, ¿tú qué vas a hacer el jueves? What? Dia jueves, ¿tú qué vas a hacer el día jueves? Y él me dijo, he told me, hey, listen, ¿y qué día soy? Pero yo le pregunté eso a la secretaria de un banco. I was asking, uh, one of the secretaries of the Caribbean Mercantile Bank. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, listen, yeah, yeah. What about how are you doing? You know, what are you going to do next uh, Tuesday? Hey, doctor, why? You know, just to know. I want to know what are you going to do next Tuesday. Do you know what time? Because uh, four thirty. You know, I wake up four thirty. At five o'clock, I'm five ten. I'm five ten. At, at 11 o'clock in the night, he was, she was working. It's a, it's a terrible routine. And I think, I suppose, that he is spending the same kind of neurotransmitters. And I suppose that she's going to get more, uh, she's going to get more possibilities to get the chronic fatigue than the other thing, I suppose. For that reason, the message that I want to give you today is that we have tried to change the routine. For example, I was not changing my routine 35 years here, and then you, you have to see my aspect. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, this is the description of the several centers, the autonomic centers, uh, sympathetic, uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic areas. You can see the This is the brain scale, and it's uh, with a demonstration. And most of the cranial nerves that you have in front, uh, they have the apparent emergent, they are uh, trying to go out, you know, from different uh, parts, different areas, but really the real center of this nerve is a part, it's another place but convenience of the adaptation, etc., they are almost together. Okay, next. Okay, uh, in general, you know, uh, these uh, items are showing you that they are promoting the, the supervivence of the, of the tissue, you know, increasing the oxygen, increasing the possibility to to breathe better, uh, to, to work in, in better condition, you know, it's just to show you that in general, the purpose is to preserve the, the tissue. Okay, this is the uh, sympathetic uh, component. You know, as you know, uh, the emergency of this is the the central part of the medulla, and um, uh, uh, 
in the area of the lateral uh, aspect of the, the spine they are, and the medulla, uh, they have a, the emergence of these uh, structures. And the name of the intermedial lateral is perfect because it's in the medial part and the lateral area. And they are uh, using the, the uh, outlet of the ventral part not to escape. And the innervation of the viscerous organs and uh, organs and glands, you know, is is possible after to to escape from the medulla. You know, the the concept, the main concept is uh, that they have a, the behavior of these two systems is a little bit different. You know, in the sympathetic area, they have a, a specific centers adjacent uh, to the bone of the spine and uh, for that reason the preganglionic fibers you know are very short and postganglionically you know the distance is a little bit longer but in the parasympathetic system you know the preganglionar uh, distance is more and for that reason they have a, a longer preganglionar fibers, but the postganglionar is really around the organ that they are, are working. You know, it's, it's very important. Uh, uh, I was thinking why, you know, um, and really it's, uh, it's uh, difficult to explain that because in the, um, in the system that is working with the uh, good level of conscience, you know, if we have only one neuron that is reaching the skeletal muscle and that's all. But the, in this case, for example, in the sympathetic area, we have at least two neurons and they are using the, the ganglionar structures to do connections. I don't know if uh, the possibility to rest or the possibility to interchange or to do more anastomosis, etc. This is the cause of that, but it's amazing that they are using these uh, stations, you know, to do connections uh, with the proper neurotransmitters, and then before to reach the, the purpose, the target point. But it really remains interesting, you know. The first system that is excitatory, and in case of emergency, I suppose, uh, it's possible to do it uh, very fast. But the moderation, you know, it takes a little bit more relaxed to do it. I suppose it's because of that. 